Hello and welcome to another film about calorimetry calculations. This is the sixth in a series of um, films about the standard level energetics topic and it follows on from the last film uh, where we looked at calculating a molar enthalpy change of combustion. Here we're going to be doing this same kind of problem but we're going to be doing it for a neutralization reaction. So um, pretty much the same deal. We're going to use the formula that we've uh, been using for a while now. We're going to calculate a molar enthalpy change of neutralization and we're once again going to look at the assumptions and errors that we might have made in our experiment to try and account for any differences between our results and the data book values. Okay, so again there's a reminder of the formula that we're going to be using. I'm not going to dwell on that one too long now because we should be quite familiar with it. And here is our question. Okay, so we've got a neutralization reaction now, and this is happening in um, a coffee cup calorimeter, which has uh, got an interestingly spelt uh, coffee there. But anyway, let's not dwell on that too long. Um, so we've mixed uh, two solutions together, and they're taking part in a neutralization reaction. You will know a lot more about these kind of reactions once you've uh, done the acids and bases topic. Um, but we don't really need to know for this first simple type of problem what reaction is going on because we're just being asked to calculate the heat released by the reaction. So like before, this is this kind of the simple problem where we're just finding Q. We're finding we need to know the mass of the substance that's being heated. Well, what is the mass in this case? We've got 50 centimeters cubed of this substance and 50 centimeters cubed of this substance. Um, we're normally heating water. So where's the water gone? Well, if you think about it, most of these one mole per liter solutions, the vast majority of them is water. Okay, So if we approximate them to behave just like water, then we can say that the mass of water here is 100 grams, because we've taken 50 centimeters cubed of basically water and added 50 centimeters cubed of what is basically water. And this reaction is going to take place in here, and it's going to heat the water. So we've got 100 grams of water. The heat capacity of water, as we know, is 4.18 joules per kelvin per gram. I don't know where that little mark keeps coming from, but I'll keep doing that today. And the temperature change, as we're told in the question, is 6.5 kelvin. Okay, so the Q is equal to those three things multiplied together, and that's 2717 joules. And I'm paying attention to significant figures here. The most, the, the, my weakest part bit of data is this two significant figure bit here, so that is 2.7 kilojoules. Again, I've turned it into kilojoules, but I didn't have to do that. Okay, so there's the heat released by the reaction. Now, as before, what we're going to do now is we're going to change the question slightly and we're going to turn it into a molar heat of neutralization. Now, it's important to realize what this is, okay? And as I say, you know more about these reactions once you've done the acids and bases topic. But remember, we have mentioned before that neutralization is the reaction of H plus with OH minus ions to make water. And the molar heat of neutralization is the enthalpy change when one mole of water is formed in the in a neutralization reaction. So what we're going to need to do here is to figure out how much water would have formed. Well, if we figure out how many uh, what the equation for the reaction is here, we've got HCl plus NaOH, acid plus base making salt and water, so NaCl is the salt and water H2O. That equation is balanced. And we can see that if I started with one mole of this and one mole of that, I'd make one mole of water. So bearing in mind that my heat change was, what was it, 2.7 kilojoules, this was released when I mixed this quantity of hydrochloric acid with this quantity of sodium hydroxide. And I can use these volumes and concentrations to find the number of moles, because the number of moles is equal to the concentration times the volume, which is equal to 1 times the volume which has to be in dm cubed, so 0.1 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.050 to be exact, and that is 0 0.05. I'm giving that to one significant figure because my concentration is to one significant figure. Again, I want a value in kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to take the kilojoules and divide it by the moles. Okay, so 2.7 over 
0 0.05 is equal to 54.3 kilojoules per mole. But I'm going to give this to only one significant figure because I've got the weakest bit of data to one significant figure. So this is 50 kilojoules per mole. But remember, the temperature went up, right? So this had to be an exothermic change. And you might remember that neutralization reactions are always exothermic. So here is our final answer. The enthalpy, the molar heat of neutralization is 50, minus 50 kilojoules per mole. And the last thing we have to do now is to compare that value with our minus 57.1 kilojoules per mole, which comes from the data book. So in other words, this is the accepted value. So let's think about what assumptions or errors we might have made. Well, there might have been some heat loss here, right? But bear in mind, this is quite well insulated, certainly a lot better insulated than the, than the can was, okay? And you might notice that our 50 minus 50 kilojoules per mole is quite a lot closer to this data book value than the value was in the last question that we did in the previous film. Um, what other assumptions did we make? Well, remember at the start we said that these two solutions would behave just like water. So in other words, we've assumed that the heat capacity or the specific heat capacity of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide solutions is the same as that of water. So when we used 4.18 here, we made an, a, an assumption which isn't going to be quite right. But any difference is going to account for some difference in our values. We also assumed that the density of these solutions was the same as water because we assumed that we could just go right the mass here is the sum of 50 plus 50 as if these were just pure water okay and that's also not going to be quite right notice that the values that we've calculated both here and in the previous film show that the reactions as we have found them we're showing them to be less exothermic than they ought to be in other words we're not measuring quite as big a heat change as we should. And that makes sense because we are expecting some loss of heat to the surroundings. Okay? So a few different assumptions and errors that we've mentioned in these last two films. Make sure that you can come up with these in exams and tests because they do ask these sort of questions quite regularly. Okay, so we were hoping at the start of this film that we might, by the end of it, have used the fairly familiar formula to calculate some heat changes and then to go from there and calculate a molar enthalpy change. This time we were doing it for a neutralization reaction. And we've once again considered some assumptions and errors that we might have made in our calculations and our experiments. So hopefully it makes sense, but if you've got any questions or comments, please come and see me as soon as you can or post a comment on YouTube.